Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Every year, crimes go unsolved here in Southern California. Loved ones are left waiting. I'm Joy Benedict, and as a news reporter, I've covered countless crimes, countless homicides, and I know that sometimes the victims of these crimes are forgotten almost as quickly as the headlines fade. So tonight, on Crime Stoppers Case Files, we take another look at some of the crimes still lingering unsolved in our communities. Let's get started. I want to introduce you to Leslie Long. She was a young wife and mother of three small children. Leslie was working the night shift at a Palmdale gas station on December 3rd, 1978. Yes, this case is 33 years in the making, and the investigation is just as prevalent today because what happened that night left her three children without a mother, and they still deserve justice. Leslie was my older sister. We were 11 months apart. Not quite uh, a full year. I was born before her first birthday. Her and I, being so close together, we fought the most, but we loved each other all the time. And My mom used to dress us all alike when we were little, you know. Usually my grandmother made all our outfits and they were all the same. And Leslie got to a point where she didn't want to be like the rest of us, you know, so she would rebel and uh, just wear something totally different, just to, you know, just to be her own person, I guess wanted to be different from the rest, didn't want to be lost in the crowd, I don't know. She was a real spiritual person. My mom brought us up in, in the church. She liked school, she was very smart. When she got older in school, she loved playing the flute. The band was her, her thing. She was in marching band at Antelope Valley High School, and she played flute also at Joshua Elementary. That's where she started playing, in the little band there. She met Jim, her husband in high school, through church actually, um, we all went to, to the same church. How I met my husband, which was Jim's brother, my sister introduced us at church. You know, she says, my boyfriend has a brother, you know, I want you to meet him. So we met in church on Easter Sunday. And um, that was when I was 12. She ended up getting pregnant with her first child and they ended up getting married in May of 1974. They were already married a few years before I married uh, my husband, Mark, in 1976. She had three children. Jimmy was the youngest, just barely a year. Karen, three, and Christy, four. My name is Christy Long. I'm the oldest of Leslie's three children. I do remember really vaguely that it seemed like she was always wearing a handkerchief, like a handkerchief on her head, almost. She was kind of almost outdoorsy like she used to I remember my grandma telling me like to make her own jams and that kind of stuff like my dad liked to be up in the mountains and outside they were kind of like very outdoorsy we did used to go camping I don't really remember that I see pictures in the photo album of us camping not that I remember it but we were all pretty young um, when this happened I was four almost five and uh, Jimmy he was just a baby on uh, December 3rd, 1978, between 9.30 and 10 o'clock p.m., uh, Leslie Long was working a uh, small gas station uh, on the corner of Division and Palmdale Boulevard in the uh, city of Palmdale. Leslie was a 20-year-old uh, mother of three. She actually worked at the uh, gas station with her sister, Marva. And the gas station was a small uh, Chevron gas station. It was a full-service gas station. We uh, washed windows, checked tires, changed oil, basic mechanics. She was uh, needing a job, so I talked to my manager and got her hired. Marva had the shift earlier, and Leslie relieved Marva. And after Marva went home, that's when Leslie uh, went missing. I think the part that stuck with me most is that she had asked me if I wanted to trade shifts with her that day because, you know, she wanted to get home to her kids. I didn't have any kids, and uh, so I was, no, I don't want to trade shifts with you. I want to go home, so I uh, left her there. 
And that was the last time I saw her. A gentleman came in to pump gas. Once he finished, he went to go pay for the gas. I walked into the uh, gas station office, found the lights on, the doors open, but the gas station attendant was nowhere to be found. Um, he did observe that the uh, floor safe had been lifted and the contents had been removed and change was scattered all over the floor. He did see a purse inside the office and he suspected that uh, something was wrong, so he called the Antelope Valley Sheriff's Station and the deputies came to investigate. This is our theory based on the evidence of what happened. We believe there were two suspects involved in this murder at least. Uh, we do have two donors of DNA at the crime scene uh, that are distinct and separate. The suspects came in and uh, robbed Leslie at gunpoint. Uh, they could see that there was a floor safe. Leslie had the key to that and they forced her to open the safe at gunpoint. Uh, once the safe was open, there is a lower safe in the floor and they forced her to open that safe and that's where the large cash was. And that normally would not have been open until the manager came in in the morning. The uh, safe was emptied of all cash, the change was strewn all over the floor and then Leslie was forcibly taken at gunpoint into the suspect's vehicle. Somewhere in that time frame she was also raped, whether it was inside the car or out at the uh, crime scene, we're not really sure, uh, but she was raped. And uh, the drive from the Palmdale gas station where she was killed uh, is a remote area of the desert. At that time of night, in 1978, there were no residences, there were no lights, and uh, where she was taken was a dark, isolated hill in the middle of the desert of the town of Acton and then she was uh, forced to kneel on the ground and she was shot in the back of the head five times. From there, I just remember the days progressing that, you know, we all were wondering about what happened and where she was and trying not to worry too much for the kids' sake you know, to keep them calm, I guess. I just remember staying there at the house in Palmdale with Jim, with her husband, days after days, you know, just being there to help him with the kids and he would just sit and just kind of be in deep thought, you know. He seemed scared and upset, you know, that why would someone do this to my wife, to the mother of my children? Why would anybody take her away? I'm Los Angeles County Sheriff Lee Baca. The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department has partnered with the LAPD and other municipal police departments throughout our county to form the Los Angeles Regional Crime Stoppers Organization. Crime Stoppers is an important law enforcement tool, a proactive approach to removing dangerous criminals from our streets. Each week on this television program, we will share the facts about unsolved cases and you will have the opportunity to submit information that may help investigators without ever having to give your name. I encourage you to provide us any information you may have. I thank you for joining us and doing your part to make our community safer. On December 3rd, 1978, Leslie Long, a female white 20 years old, was working a gas station in Palmdale. She was uh, robbed, kidnapped, raped, and shot and killed six miles south of the gas station. There was a uh, massive search for Leslie, and it took three days uh, before her body was found, six miles south of the gas station on a uh, small hill just uh, south of the freeway in the town of Acton. I think at the time everybody might have had a question of that maybe she just took off, but she wouldn't do that. Not my sister, she was happily married. They had a great relationship. They had three beautiful children. Um, she was very responsible, very responsible person. She had even, which she had never done before, she had already gotten all of uh, Christmas presents and put them on layaway. I know she got my mom a Bible, and in that Bible she dated it December 20th, my mom's birthday, and you know told my mom how much she loved her and then how appreciated she was of all the help and uh, encouragement that she gave to her growing up. She wasn't one to think ahead and buy ahead for stuff. She always waited till the last minute. To me, I had a feeling in that way that God was preparing Leslie to have this stuff all taken care of 
so that we would be able to have one last gift from her. There's a lot I don't actually remember. I remember my grandma telling me I laid on the floor in front of the fireplace while my mom was missing. Patsy, my aunt, I do remember her babysitting us. She was pretty much always there. My brother-in-law worked at uh, Northrop, so I would go down every morning to babysit the kids. I, I'd be there at six o'clock in the morning with two kids, because <laughs> I had a, a newborn after that too. So I would get the kids up and get them ready. Christy started kindergarten, and then I watched uh, Karen and Jimmy, and plus my two all day. And in about a year and a half, almost after my sister's incident, my brother-in-law, Jim, Leslie's husband, he'd bought a, a motorcycle, a, a Honda. He had taken all the kids for a little ride around the block on it. And uh, he took off and went for a motorcycle ride. I really think he did that just to help clear his head, you know, because having the responsibility of, of all three of the kids right then. And unfortunately, Jim was hit and, and killed on his motorcycle. We don't really know what happened. There was a car coming the other direction, and I don't know if he swerved, car swerved, but uh, he uh, had that accident and we lost him. I remember sitting in my grandmother's front lawn and I had to tell the three kids that their daddy wasn't coming back home, that, that he went to go live with mommy up in heaven with Jesus. Karen, the middle daughter, looked at me and said, does that mean that we can call you mommy now? And I said, if that's what you want to call me. My husband and I took the three kids, got legal guardianship over them, and we raised them as our own. I went from having two kids to having five overnight. Behind me here is the uh, actual gas station where Leslie was kidnapped from. Uh, the building is virtually the same as it was in 1978. It's been remodeled on the inside. You know, the open sign was where her office would have been. The suspects entered the door behind me and uh, robbed her of uh, the safe that was on the floor inside the uh, office area. And then they uh, brought her out by gunpoint and placed her in a car and uh, took off in this direction. We believe to the 14 freeway was just as to the west of us and then south on the freeway. The suspects executed Leslie Long, shooting her five times in the head. And in a horrible twist of fate, one year later, Leslie's husband Jim was killed in a motorcycle accident, leaving their three children without both their parents. I think Leslie and I were the closest out of all my sisters. And her and I talked one day, and she looked at me and says, if anything was to ever happen to me and Jim, would you take the kids? And I said, of course I would. And I said, you would do the same for me, right? If anything happened to me or, or Mark, you'd take our kids. And so we had made that pact. We had the same family still with the, you know, my mom and my aunt being sisters and my dad and my uncle being brothers. The whole family was pretty much still the same. They chose to take the three of us in rather than let us go to different foster homes, which I, of course, when I was young, I didn't think about, but you know, now I'm pretty thankful that they chose to do that. I'm sure it couldn't have been easy for them. They were really young and they had two kids already. There was five kids in one bedroom, two bunk beds and a crib, you know, when we first moved in with them. It was a little rough, but I honestly don't even remember when I started calling them mom and dad. It just seems like they were always mom and dad. This has been so long. I mean, what did we say, like 33 years, I mean, old of a case, and this is something that we have never talked about. Even within our own family, the first time that we met with Brian, the detective, was the first time me and my brother and sister had ever had a conversation about this in our lives. We never discussed that as children. I'm very proud of them. They're hard workers. They love people, they love the Lord. I've often asked myself that question, if she would be proud of me, and I think so, yeah. In 1978-79, the uh, Antelope Valley Press uh, covered this story extensively. 
and many people in the Antelope Valley probably are under the impression that this was solved already because back then we had two prison escapees that uh, escaped out of Northern California. They were believed to have been involved in this murder of Leslie Long. Um, they escaped about three days before the murder occurred and one of the escapees was actually doing life in prison for an identical crime where a gas station attendant was kidnapped, robbed, and killed at a remote area on a Sunday night. Because of the similarities, detectives obviously looked into these two escapees once they were recaptured. Uh, they were interviewed and made some statements that could have been uh, implicating them in the murder. Recently with DNA, we uh, tested uh, the DNA that we have from the crime scene to these two escapees and uh, they both have been eliminated from the DNA uh, donors of the crime. So they are no longer suspects in this case and this case remains unsolved. For me, it would like close a chapter. It would uh, put me at, at ease to know that, that there would be a name and a face for this person or people that they would be held accountable for the most cruelest thing that they could do to a person, to a loving wife and a devoted mom. To be honest, it's been something that I've tried not to think about for a long time because there hasn't been any definitive answer as to who did this or why. To myself, that would bring me a little bit of, um, I don't like to use that word closure, but that's what it is. It would just help me close the door on uh, just a gnawing thing that's been gnawing at you for so long. On December 3rd, 1978, Leslie Long was working a gas station in Palmdale. She was uh, robbed, kidnapped, raped, and she was shot in the back of the head five times. This case has been open since 1978. We never stopped working on it. Modern science has given us the gift of DNA. And so uh, now that we have uh, good solid evidence in, in DNA that will eventually identify the individuals that committed this murder, um, we are confident that we can solve this case. We just need the public to uh, let us know if they know anything or if they know uh, maybe relatives have spoken of this crime. Um, but just because it's a 33-year-old case uh, doesn't mean it's closed. We are still working it. We never give up on these cases, and we're determined to solve it. My sister Marva, she's the oldest. I know that she has struggled very, very much so with getting my sister Leslie the job at the service station. And they were at work together that same day. My sister Leslie had asked my sister Marva to switch shifts with her to close. My sister told her no, that she had had plans. She got off at 8 o'clock and Leslie closed at 10. And she feels guilty that maybe she should have, because at the time she didn't have any children, and Leslie had the three. And now she feels that maybe she would have switched, that their mom would still be here. And we're asking if anybody remembers that night or uh, knows anything about the kidnapping and uh, murder of Leslie Long to call LA County Sheriff's Homicide at 323. 890-5579 or call the uh, LA Regional uh, Crime Stoppers. It was a Sunday night, December 3rd, 1978, in Palmdale at the Chevron gas station on Palmdale Boulevard in Division. Please help us. We would like to bring this to a closure for the children and would like to be able to let my grandmother know who is 100 years old that there's finally closure, that there finally is someone that will be held accountable for the murder of my sister, Leslie Combs Long. Even though more than 30 years have passed, the pain has not, and this family needs your help. So if you remember anything about this crime, if you've heard anything since, please call Crime Stoppers. The number is 1-800-222-TIPS, or check out our website at lacrimestoppers.org to learn how you can email or even text your tip. The reward for this case is $26,000.
Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files. Remember, we are here every week with more crimes and more families needing answers. These are your neighbors. This is your community. And you can make a difference.